But today, I'm going to be showing you guys a way that you can make your trick shots on the first try every single time. Kinda. Okay, to fake trick shots, you're going to need a couple of things. Number one, you're going to need something to throw. In this case, I'm going to be using a basketball. Number two, you're going to need a goal. In this case, it is a basketball hoop. Number three, you're going to need a camera, and this camera must be able to be locked into manual mode. And finally, you're going to need an editing software. I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve for mine. So the first up is to film it, and when you start filming it, you'll want to set up your camera on a tripod. And once you have it all framed up, you want to go through and set all of your camera settings and lock them into manual mode so they will not change. Ideally, you'll want a shutter angle to be about 180 degrees or a shutter speed of double your frame rate to get the best possible motion blur. Next, you want to go as far away from your goal as possible and pretend to make the shot. Once you've done that, grab your ball and go a little bit closer to the hoop and then try and make it from the same angle and speed that it would be coming had you made it from the first location. This can take a couple of tries to get right and if you have a ladder, it's really nice to be able to get up to that height at the basketball hoop uh, to get the right angle. Then you want to get a shot of the ball in frame without any motion blur or anything going in front of it. Then you want to capture a clean plate of about 10 to 15 seconds of your video. A clean plate is a version of your video that has nothing in it except for the background. The reason you want to capture 10 to 15 seconds is because like in my case there's trees moving in the background and we want to keep that motion. Now that you have all of your video we can dump it onto the computer and begin editing. Now of course I do want to say that I, I actually can make the trick shots. I don't need to use visual effects to to make them every time. I was just demonstrating for tutorial purposes. Alright, so now that I'm inside of DaVinci Resolve, I have my shot right here, and I just want to find uh, where my clean plate's at, so I got that right over here, and I'll just go until I come back into the frame. So right about there, and then I can just go ahead and insert that onto my timeline. Uh, so we might need to slow this down a little bit because it might not quite be long enough. Uh, so just keep in mind, always shoot longer than you'd expect. But anyways, then next up what we need is the shot of me uh, shooting, shooting it. So I'll come down here and I'll mark my in. And then I'll just uh, mark my out right about there. And then go ahead and place that on top of my other clip in the video two layer. Okay. And then in the next layer, video three, we're going to want the shot of me making it. So it took me a couple of tries to get the uh, accuracy right here. Uh, so I did it right about here. So I'm going to mark my in, let the ball bounce for a little while until about right there, mark the out, and then I can go ahead and place that on top. Then finally I just need the shot of my ball in the frame without any motion blur and I'm going to grab it from right here. So I'll mark my in and I can do my out at some other point and I will add that into the timeline. All right, so now that I have all four of my clips on here, we can start getting all of the timing set up. So I'm gonna hide my top two layers, all right? And now we can just see the video of me making the shot. As it goes, it bounces a couple of times. And we'll make this uh, the same length as the second shot here. And then I can trim the clean plate down so it's all the same length. Next up, I'll view this top shot here and we can drop its opacity down to about 50. And what we want to do is line it up so when I make the shot, which we can add a bookmark to on the clip by selecting it and then clicking the bookmark. And what I'll do is I'll just guess about how long it would take the ball to get to the hoop. And we'll say something like that looks good. So we can watch it, it goes across and gets made. All right, we might want this to be a little bit shorter yet. There we go, we can work with that. We can always change the timing a little bit later. So on the shot of me making it, I'll trim this all the way down to the end again and then I can duplicate this clip by holding Alt and dragging. Now at the very beginning, I will want to bring the opacity back up. I can right click, do change clip speed, and do freeze frame. Okay, and I'll go ahead and hit change, and then I can shrink this down, and I will put it uh, before the shot on video three there, and I can delete the audio clip. So now I'll be frozen there until I actually start making the shot, and I'll bring the opacity of this up again. And finally, we'll show the video four layer and bring the, and then come to the very first frame of this clip, do change clip speed and do freeze frame. So now I just have a freeze frame of the ball sitting right there. And I can delete the audio for that one as I don't need it, as well as the clean plate audio. Now, real quick, I'm going to go into my color tab and add a little color grade to these clips as these were all shot in B-Raw. 
All right, so I just threw a little bit of a color grade on there, but now that we have that done, what we can do is select all of these clips, right click and do a new fusion clip. Now we'll combine them all together into this one clip that when we go into fusion, it all comes in as separate media and notes. So I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit so it's a, e a little bit easier to uh, visualize what is going on. So there we go. And then I can label all these. So I'll do uh, clean plate. I can do shot, I can do make, and then I will do ball. Okay, so first we want to view the first merge, and now uh, what we want to do is remove the ball from this shot as soon as possible. So we're just going to fast forward until it like leaves my hand, so right about there we'll have it gone. And uh, we'll do one more frame. And then I'll add in a polygon node, and then what we can do is just kind of trace around in the middle here. Just like so. And we also want to remove the shadow as soon as possible. So there we go, and then I can connect this up to the shot, and as you can see, the ball is gone. Now if I play this, as you can see, it will just uh, instantly disappear right there. Uh, but what we want to do is, because there's some kind of harsh harshness along the shadows, because the, the sunlight was different uh, at the making of these two shots. So what I'll do is just add a little bit of a soft edge to kind of blend between that. We don't want to do too much, but it's always good to have a little bit of a soft edge, and that cleans it up pretty well. So now the ball just disappears right away, so that's going to make it way easier for us to fake the trick shot later on. Now what we want to do is uh, view the second merge here, and we want to make the ball uh, be invisible for as long as possible. Okay, So right about until I'd say this frame right here. So let's add in a mask. Uh, we don't want to connect it quite yet. And I can just outline right around this basketball hoop here. And around my shadow because we're going to want the uh, the ball is going to drop down here. And what we'll end up doing is animating the mask later on. Okay, so let's do that. We can connect it up and then add a little bit of a soft edge again. So there we go. So now the ball isn't there and then it appears. So we can actually see the shadow down here. So we want to remove that at the beginning. So let's come back to where this keyframe is. And we can just drag these two points up and just make it so you can't really see the shadow. Uh, these points are all a mess now. I should have done this right away, but it'll work out here. Okay, so now this is my new layout here. So now the ball comes down. And right once the ball uh, starts dropping, we can animate the polygon mask to kind of zoom out here. So now we can see the shadow again. So at this point, actually, we want the that to be right there. And then what I'm going to do is just go through here, making sure that the ball will stay inside this mask at all times. Uh, just adjusting the points here, and it looks like it's doing a pretty good job of doing that. So there we go, you should have something like this where the ball uh, disappears right away and then appears once it gets to the hoop. Now if you look down on the concrete here, you can see that kind of brightens up a little bit when the mask comes along. So what we can do is add in a color corrector after the make, and we can just bring the uh, gain down just a very little bit, and hopefully that'll help remove that just a bit. Alright, so just kind of match the colors. That, this right here is why you got to make sure that the camera settings stay perfect. Um, they were locked off in this shot, it's just the light changes. But if the camera settings were changing, it'd be way worse than what it is right here. So that's looking a lot better, it'll do for this tutorial. But now I will view my media out so I can see this ball here. And I'll add in an ellipse mask, and then I can just center this right over the ball. And then shrink the size down, and just get it centered right on there and add a little bit of a soft edge. After this, let's add in a transform node so we can just move it around a little bit and verify that all the edges look right. What I'll do is I'll just center this right in the middle of the frame here. So we can do Control G to enter the frame guides. And we'll just get this positioned right in the center. Now if I check the mask again, I'm just going to uh, bring the Y value down just a little. And I think I'll just shrink the width and height masks. So now after the second transform, I'll add in another transform. So that now this one has the ball centered on its pivot point. Uh, and what we want to do is go down to the beginning. And we can see when the ball is about to be released here. So let's go ahead and center it on, on this right here. You always want to animate the ball a few frames before it's actually shown on the camera. Because that will get you the most accurate motion blur. So add a keyframe on the center and the size. Alright, and then what we can do is come to the part that it hits the basketball hoop. So let's go right here. And now I can move this center it on the basketball and then bring the size up and then go one frame forward after that and move the basketball on it again so that we that way we have motion blur and now we can add some keyframes on this merge three node so let's add a keyframe right there go one frame forward and bring this one off 
So it animates off at the end there. And then we'll go back to the beginning and do the same thing. So let's go back to about right here. We'll let it come up a few frames and we'll have a transition right here. So it'll be animated off. Next frame, it'll be animated on. Awesome, so now what we need to do is we can click on the path points and grab these yellow handles to change the path of the, that, or that the basketball follows. All right, so what we want to do is just find something that's kind of natural that uh, feels like it'll bridge the two points that we have selected. All right, so at the beginning here, it does a pretty good job of following along this path. We'll want to bring this and make it just a little more severe. That is looking pretty good. So now we can come into the settings and check motion blur and bring the quality up to 10. And then you'll want to match the shutter angle to whatever you shot it at. And maybe you can make it a little bit longer just to cheat it a little bit. Okay, so now we can go ahead and preview what we have so far. And as you can see, the ball follows that path really nice. And now we just need to make some changes to the speed of the ball uh, to make it kind of match the angle that it's coming at. So we want it to be a little faster at the beginning, kind of slow down up at the top here and speed up just a little bit right when it ends. So we can come to the spline editor and view this transform node. And now we can just click on the points here and dragging the bottom one up is going to speed it up just a little bit. So now let's go ahead and get a preview of that. All right, so that's getting better. I did a little too much there. So let's uh, view this again. And I can just drag this point down, make it not quite as severe. And then you pretty much just need to play around with this path until you get something that looks good in your situation. It's never going to be the same for every single trick shot. Okay, but once you get something you like, you just have to go through it and make a few more changes. Like, I didn't do this right away, but I start walking forward in my shot. So I'm going to need to animate the mask out so that it reveals me as I walk here. And there we go, that'll follow me as I run out to uh, retrieve the ball here. Okay, so we now have the final shot, and I'd say it looks pretty good. I mean, there's still some more tweaking that I can make to the path just to make the ball look like it's moving a little bit more realistically. But overall, for the amount of time I spent on it, I think I got a really good looking result. You'll want to go through and add in some sound effects and stuff. For some reason, my audio waveforms aren't showing up. But you can hear the audio, so I'm, I'm very confused. But anyways, add in some sound effects. It'll make it seem way more realistic. But that is how you make a trick shot every single time. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a brand new video. If you guys want to download this footage and try it out yourself, you can do that by becoming a member on my Buy Me A Coffee page, link down below. You get all sorts of perks like project files, early access to tutorials, and discounts from my store. But if you guys have any tutorial suggestions, comments, or questions, please let me know down in the comments section below. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.